We're here today with Dan Burstein, author of the New York Times bestseller, Secrets of the Code, a book that offers a comprehensive guide to the provocative ideas presented in the Da Vinci Code. What issues from that book do you tackle in yours? We try to look at all the primary issues that are described in the Da Vinci Code and then a lot of things that are just referred to in, in brief. But we look at the relationship of Jesus and Mary Magdalene to what the scholars say about that. We look at the role of the sacred feminine in the beginning of religious ideas in the human mind. We look at the work that archaeologists have done to turn up new scriptures, alternative scriptures, the so-called Gnostic Gospels that were found in 1945. Uh, we look at Leonardo, the artist, and the painting, The Last Supper, and try to examine the argument that's made in the Da Vinci Code about its validity. We look at secret societies, Opus Dei, the Priory of Sion. Uh, and many, many of the uh, ideas that are mentioned in passing in the Da Vinci Code become subjects of uh, our look at what the experts and what the academics and what the real life historians and the real life Robert Langdons uh, have to think, have to say about uh, these kinds of issues. What made you dig further into the Da Vinci Code? I literally closed the book, read it all in one sitting, uh, became very influenced to wonder about what was fact and what was fiction by going in the middle of the night as I was reading the book to our art library and looking at the Last Supper and suddenly the figure seated to the right hand of Jesus in the painting of the Last Supper did look like a woman to me for the first time. I started to wonder well if this has validity if the world has been looking at this painting for 500 years and have, hasn't pointed out, or for a few people have pointed out, that this figure looks awfully female. Uh, what else in Da Vinci Code might be truer than it seems? Uh, I assumed I was reading fiction and was surprised to find out that some of the things were remarkably either true or the subject of legitimate intellectual academic speculation. Have you answered all of the questions that you set out to tackle? No. Uh, you know, the, the wonderful thing about the Da Vinci Code, which we have tried to echo in Secrets of the Code, is that it starts a conversation. And it starts a very powerful conversation that we don't generally engage in in our pop culture. Uh, it really gets to the meaning of religious belief and why people believe the things they believe. So now with your book completed, have you gained new knowledge that might have altered your previous ideas or opinions? One of the really subversive ideas in the Da Vinci Code uh, that I would like to learn a lot more about is, is you have this change that takes place from Jesus being the enemy of the Roman Empire and being crucified for being a revolutionary basically and three or four centuries later you have the Roman Empire adopting Christianity as its effectively at state religion. Uh, how that process took place and with it how the content of the Christian message may have morphed and changed I think is a very very interesting idea to consider further. What mysteries are you going to tackle next? People who are all over the map with their thinking about who Mary Magdalene was in history, the individual, if indeed she was a single historical character. People are doing lots and lots of very, very interesting work on this subject, and we've tried to capture all that in an upcoming book we have called Secrets of Mary Magdalene. Secrets of the Code offers an in-depth look at astounding mysteries and discoveries that will excite the mind and satisfy your curiosity. This book is a must-read for those who are fascinated by the Da Vinci Code and for anyone looking for more insight in history and religion.